Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show, weekend update show. Actually, hope everybody is having a great start to the weekend. It is a little bit before 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Trying to knock out the updates now so I can enjoy uh, the whole weekends with my kids' schedule. Just uh, kind of enjoy this beautiful uh, spring weather. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, we would invite you to subscribe, like, share, uh, and take continuously take this uh, journey with us. Uh, for nonstop, unbiased technical analysis uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, which again, and if you look at this market, is a pretty, uh, pretty smart idea to kind of take that, uh, take that route because everybody knows for the last, it's been now, you know, two and a half weeks. Uh, we've been really, really stuck in this pretty aggressive channel. Um, when I mean aggressive, I mean super duper tight. And you, you'd figure the market would get above this channel, get below this channel with. Uh, the earnings, and we'll get to that uh, in a second. But so far, that hasn't been the case. And, and, and really, I, I don't remember um, I don't remember uh, any point, the last, at least the last five, 10 years, uh, that the market has traded this tight without uh, any resolution or any light at the end of the tunnel. And one thing I always talk about in trading is, um, you know, the sum of the parts versus the whole. So for example, during 2022, we were, you know, we spent about 85% below uh, the 50-day moving average. And that was obviously a clear sell, sell signal with the NASDAQ uh, down over 30%. And you started seeing a lot of people talking about, well, this stock is standing out. And my whole point was, well, why are you uh, focusing on the one stock that's standing out? I would rather focus on the 20,000 stocks that are not because you get a lot more opportunity, uh, a lot more opportunity on that side of the market versus you know trying to pick a needle in a haystack to see if you can get something going. This market has been completely, completely the opposite of that, in the last, especially in the last two weeks. Are you getting opportunities? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. For all you guys uh, who've been with us for over 13 years, you kind of know that this market's a little bit different in the last two and a half weeks, but you're still getting some pretty good opportunities. The only problem with this type of scenario is now it's kind of flipped. Instead of looking at the whole versus the sum of the parts, now we're looking for the sum of the parts versus the whole. And you can see the whole the market's just not doing anything. I think everybody could agree with that. I don't care what your process is, what type of stocks you trade, or how you go about your day, but you can see how, you know, the, especially on the queues, the, the market hasn't done anything. It tried to break out a couple of times and failed. It tried to break down a couple of times and held. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of two-way conversations that, hey, you know, you know, look how great the bulls are holding on. But then again, the flip side is, well, if they're holding on so great, why can't they push forward? And these are all uh, these are all uh, valid points, and I think eventually this will, you know, will play itself out. I, I think just one day you're gonna uh, turn on your PC, and then next thing you know, you have a measured potential day, and it's just not one stock; it's a whole, you know, it's a whole plethora of companies all going the same uh, direction. But until that happens, we kind of have to address uh, what we're seeing now. So, you know, this is a type of market right now that the one stock that's standing out is going to be the play. And you're seeing that pretty much every single day, whether it's uh, Tesla you know, blowing up on earnings, uh, whether it's Amazon yesterday coming out with, you know, coming out with news that they're, you know, having more layoffs and the stock just really just absolutely took off. Uh, but this is literally the one stock per day, the one stock a day uh, in every single industry that's making that move. And the, the toughest part about trading uh, as a whole, and there's so many different moving parts, is identify the stocks that you feel comfortable trading based on your process. Now imagine, you know, that type of scenario has been shrunk by 95%. So then you have to physically identify the one stock. And that's why it's a little bit challenging. But again, we're professionals. When I say we, everybody, anybody who's, who's uh, you know, opened up an account, uh, deposited capital and clicking a mouse, you're a professional, right? Whether you're doing this thing 15 minutes or uh, 30 years, you are a professional. Your money is as green as everybody else. The key is to kind of, you know, dissect what's going on, make adjustments, right? You could either make excuses or make adjustments 
and kind of you know let this thing play out, and eventually it will. And when you look at uh, when you look at the scoreboard this week, uh, no, nothing really stands out. All you know, all the indexes were down, you know, two tenths of a percent. S and P was down one tenth of a percent. As, as you can imagine, completely flat session. Uh, the earnings season so far has been kicked off. Very, very uneventful. Um, you know, stocks are meeting or beating expectations on numbers they're already taking down. So when you look at, for example, uh, what the banks did, right? You know, JP Morgan had a great, great quarter for revised, right? Revised expectations. Same thing uh, with Citibank. When you flip, for example, to uh, the technology names, Netflix didn't. Right, Netflix didn't had a nice little haircut. Tesla came in, uh, you know, declined twenty percent of earnings uh, year over year. They didn't. But when you look at all this, right? When you look at the grand scheme of things, we're still not able to. Well, the bears are not able to make a dent in all this futility, uh, uninventful earnings. And the question is, well, what happens next? And that's the whole point. We we don't need to. We don't need to worry about what happens next. We need to worry about the price action getting out of this rut. Uh, this week, you have uh, in an incredibly important week of earnings. Uh, you have Apple, Meta, Google, Amazon, Microsoft. You know th th that's going to set the tone. Uh, you know, is it possible uh, that we get that that monster monster break out of this consolidation cycle one way or another this week? I'm hoping so. Right? I I'm hoping so. I think this is a uh, a scenario that if this is going to be the week that we finally get out of this uh, really really tight cycle, I, I think you know all the big uh, you know all the big superstars in the tech industries they have to you know they have to play their part. Uh, the, you know the volatility has to get expanded and the, and, the, and the ranges have to be, get expanded. So uh, if I'm a betting man and I'm not okay, but if I'm a betting man, I think uh, that we are poised for a potential you know potential crescendo in this channel and we're eventually going to get out of it uh, at some point with all these companies breaking out right fingers crossed we don't know but if not again we're not going to sit there and complain we're going to take them what the market's giving us and as life says life gives you lemons uh you make lemonade so it's a very very important week um i think the market uh, is probably going to bust out of this channel one way or another this week and we'll be ready for it so here's the key metrics right this is what we need to know we know how uh how good the the, the bulls have been in absorbing bad news. This has been the, the whole case since the January 6th reversal. Uh, this has been the whole case since we reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average that we lost in 2022 on January the 11th. And here we are, right? Here we are, not that far away uh, from uh, the year-to-date highs. But when that, again, we're sitting right on the bottom of the range as well. So here's the key levels, what we need to know going into this week. And we'll, we'll look at all the, all the indexes together. So the bulls on Friday, they started selling off and they were teetering around the 20-day moving average. That's the really, really good intermediate range here, and that's the rising support. Any close, okay, any close this week below 314 is a sell signal, okay, is a sell signal on the bulls. This is not something that you need to have a discussion, long-winded argument with somebody on social media over facts of facts, technical analysis, technical analysis. So, if we lose 314 on the close, it's going to trigger a sell signal. Doesn't mean this is the top of the market, but again, if you believe in the theory stock trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, here's the demand zone that it held on Friday, and here's the next demand zone. It's this rising uh, Bollinger Band into this 308, 309 level. So 314, uh, definitely important level in the lines of the sand. For the bulls to kind of wake back up, and, and uh, we tell me if you ever heard, heard the story again, they're going to need to reclaim at least this 320. If the bulls can close above 320, uh, it will take out one, two, three days worth of selling. Uh, if we can reclaim the 320 back to the upside, then I do believe uh, we start attacking back this double top we've seen uh, around the 321.60s area. And I'm assuming if, if Apple, Google, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft have all these good earnings, you know, there's a shot that happens. So uh, fingers crossed, we have 320 close to the upside, super important, 314 uh, close to the downside, super important as well. Uh, when you look at the uh, SPY, uh, kind of doing the same thing, just a little bit better. It's a little bit more condensed, a little bit more orderly, but the range has shrunk completely. So if you look at the predominant members of the S&P 500, you got the banks and then you got stocks like Tesla, 
right? You have Tesla that, that that gave up their earnings, right? Gave up their earnings on price action, but yet the you know, but yet the bulls still didn't give up the ten day moving average, and that's a very important level. So uh, the SPYs uh, going into Monday session four ten to the downside. If we start cracking four ten, you can see four ten is the low on four fourteen. 410 is the low on 420. Smoke them if you got them. And, four t and 410 was, the, was Friday's low. So you can see that's the line in the sand. There's, no, there's nobody trying to trick you here. It's 410. 410 is support. We start losing 410. I think we get to see, we can see it flush to 407, uh, 408. For the bulls to take control, we need to close uh, over the four th uh, 414 level. That will confirm uh, the five day moving average, which is the shortest term sentiment. Uh, on the IWM, right, IWM, a little a bit of uh, more of a mess than anything else. Uh, it's, it's number one, it's deep under supply. Uh, the upside here is super duper limited unless we have a massive gap of above uh, 280, uh, 182. But you can see there's, there's a no play. There's like a no fly zone to the upside, at least on the IWM e ETF side. Uh, on the downside, you can see we would need to clear out all these trees in the forest off this 182 level to fly. We're still five points away from that. But there's a downside pivot here as well. You can see the low here on 414 is 175. Friday's low was 175 and change, right? Again, technical analysis is not is not random. Stocks are going to stop at very, very important inflection points, and they, they're going to need to hold technically. So 175 uh, to the downside on the IWM, uh, and this thing will bring in uh, more sellers. Uh, if you look at in the individual stocks going into this week, uh, you got AMD uh, definitely, you know, definitely sold off very, very nicely, just like uh, just like the SPY who held that certain level three times in a row. Well, look at AMD. AMD is now holding on to the 50-day moving average, one, two, three, four days, four of the last five days. If AMD starts losing the 50-day moving average, this thing's going to snap because that 50-day is super duper important. All you need to do is look what happens when you get above the 50-day, right? So here's here's losing the 50-day right here, right? The last time I lost the 50-day was on December 15th, and look what it did at one, two, three, four, five, six, six last five out of six days to the downside. So if you look at AMD right now, if it starts losing the 50-day moving average, it's going to get hit as well. Look at a name, for example, you know, look at a name, for example, like uh, HIMS, right? We've been talking about HIMS, uh, you know, if you've been watching the broadcast for the, the whole week, you can see the stock broke out here. The stock looks absolutely great. A, names, a name like HIMS uh, looks like it wants to, you know, challenge uh, challenge the, let's say, January, February, the March uh, the March highs. And if it does, it's going to explode. HIMS is a name you definitely want to uh, entertain more on dips, uh, then on strength, but it looks really, really good. A name like ONN, uh, we've been talking about now also for the last week. It's again broke out here. Again, another name uh, you want to attack on dips. So again, all these stocks that are not beta, keep this in mind, guys. They're they're retail darlings. Like you know, nobody you know nobody is sitting there and going, wow, you know, no institutional money flow is really sitting there unless you're you know very intimate. Uh, with the company, nobody's going to sit there and start talking about how we need to be in ONN. Most people don't. I didn't know t the stock existed till a week ago. Okay, and I've been doing this for uh, quite a minute. So a name like you know Hims, a name like ONN, you would definitely want to buy on dips. A name like DraftKings, we talked about this uh, this week as well, right? DraftKings broke out, but if, again, if you see how the stock has been entertaining, you want to buy all these stocks on dips. So anything that's not beta, it's very tough to buy on strength because you know. Let's be honest, majority of retail is underfunded, a, a trading less than three to five years, uh, and they're flipping for dimes in 20, 20 cent, 30 cent lots, or they just don't have enough size to push it through with any type of conviction. So names like, you know, anything under, you know, anything under 20, 30, $40 a share, you, you, you want to, you know, you want to entertain them into weakness, into buying them into rising support instead of buying into strength, because you see what happens, right? These stocks go up 15, 20 cents, they sell off 30 cents, the retail public gets out, right? Because again, they, they get out, and the next thing you know, you know, two hours later or a day later, the stock is is is, is flying. So consider, you know, consider the the, the smaller names, not the small cap names, but the smaller uh, dollar names. Uh, to, you know, the stocks that are strong to buying them into rising support. And if you look at DraftKings, for example, you see this orange line, right? That's the five day. That's the five day moving average we continue to talk about. Look how every single time it comes into this orange line, it bounces, right? Came in here, bounce. Came in here, bounce. Came in here, bounce. So came in here, bounce. So any any weakness into names like ONN, Hims, uh, DraftKings, you want to buy on dips just because uh, you know they're looking you know they're they're looking very very strong, but they're looking strong and they're catching 
uh, light volume uh, back, uh, uh, back test and the trapping, uh, you know, eager shorts. Even a name, for example, like ETNB, right? Look at, you know, look at the breakout, you know, look at the breakout that it had, you know, a huge, huge three-day breakout. But the point is the value continues to be buying these things on dip versus a stock like a, you know, like a, you know, like a beta name that you could buy into a certain level and the stock will explode three to six points because you're having that institutional money flow and you're having uh, that big option flow behind it. So something just to consider, uh, especially in this uh, market on, uh, you know, Tesla, look, Tesla was down 20. Okay. It was down 20. Uh, on earnings, it was up two bucks on Friday inside day. You know, it's not resting to go higher. Trust me. Uh, it's not, you know, maybe I'll have one more up day, maybe. But eventually this week, if the longer it continues to go sideways, if it starts taking down this whole channel here, and this is the key here. Um, if it starts taking down this whole channel here at some point this week, especially the earnings low, uh, this thing will crack. So, you know, we definitely want to watch that as well. Uh, Netflix, kind of the same scenario as well. You know, Netflix, you know, is attempting to balance off its uh, earnings. Uh, yeah, we want to watch the bottom channel here this week. You know, let's see if it could test the earnings low. Uh, if it does, it could be, uh, you know, it could be a pretty good, uh, it could be a pretty good continuation play. So those names we want to uh, definitely watch as well. You know, look at GameStop, right? Not usually a name that I would talk about, but just like AMD. And again, we all know GameStop, Come, right? This thing is holding on to the 50-day moving average as well, right? Take a look at this thing. This thing starts closing below the 50-day moving average as much as, you know, the mother of all squeezes or, or diamond hands, whatever the hell they call it. You know, we all know what GameStop is or what GameStop isn't. At least most of us know. So this thing closes below the 50-day moving average. It's going to get hit again. So keep an eye uh, on that as well. Uh, other than that, you know, we're just taking it day by day, right? Day by day, trade by trade. Uh, look at a name like NVIDIA, for example, right? This thing looks like, it's, you know, this has been one of the more, more hated squeezes in a while. Uh, people, you know, people have been trying to short this thing every time in weakness and every time in weakness, this keeps, it keeps on bouncing up. And again, and just like the, the NASDAQ 100 that held the 20 day, so did NVIDIA, but you know, it's, you know, NVIDIA stone. Get, if, if it's going to crack, and again, we don't know, but if it's going to crack, it's going to need to lose that 20 day moving average. And if it does, that's something I definitely, definitely watch. Uh, I want to watch uh, on my radar going into uh, this week. Quickly, let's go over the pivots. Uh, let's go over the pivots uh, from Friday. Uh, NVIDIA 270, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was NVIDIA. It took down that 270, took down that 270, traded all the way down to uh, 267 and change. Uh, ADMA, nice little uh, small cap stock. Oh, first of all, I forgot about Tesla. Uh, green to red for experienced traders. No, this is not a pivot, just a confirmation. Still needs to confirm the earnings lows. You know, $2 move down, uh, $2 move down on uh, uh, on Tesla. We had a great, great pivot on it on Thursday from the 6660s area. Uh, but really, you know, it's, Tesla continues to be fantastic. Uh, ADMA, uh, nice little small cap. I, I try to, if I find these small caps, I try to put it into uh, the webinar feed. Uh, ADMA, uh, 350 needs to be built. Here's ADMA, slow mover, right? Not, ex not exciting, not sexy. Uh, but again, here's another perfect example. The stock uh, took out the 50-day moving average. Now it's uh, building, you know, only went up a dime, but slow and steady, I think, will uh, will win the race on this one. Uh, AI finally cracked, right? AI, uh, 2040, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, here was AI, right? Finally cracked above this whole range, below this whole range here, 2040. Uh, got down to 1950s. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. So keep an eye on this thing for potential further selling. Uh, STE, I, I didn't think, I don't, I don't think it confirmed. Oh, at least I wasn't watching it. STE 1170. Uh, yeah, it did confirm 1170. This is, yeah, this is the highest close in this whole formation. I just wasn't watching this thing. Guys, watch this. Uh, you know, watch this STE. This thing has a range going all the way back to February the second. If this thing starts getting above this February second range, uh, this thing could wake up as well. Uh, DraftKings again broke out at 21, confirmed. Uh, this is the highest close in the whole formation for DraftKings, right? Close at 22 bucks, trading 22.10 after hours. Nice little close there. Uh, we talked about AI just now. Uh, AMD again, AMD continues to hold that uh, 88 level. So, you know, we're set up for next week. You know, uh, we're set up for next week. We know, uh, we absolutely know um, the bottom channels where we need to hold, we know the top channels where they need to reclaim. The key is don't get frustrated, right? Don't get frustrated. Eventually, uh, this market will ex start to expand. Hopefully, this is the week with uh, the mega cap earnings. Uh, they will do so. 
Uh, but more important, guys, the one little message I you know I want to leave all you know all you guys with. Okay, uh, there, there's a lot of people, and unfortunately, you know, I grew up on a trading desk. I mean, all my you know all my lifelong friends, you know, 24 years ago, right at Carlin on the you know, on the on the Carlin desk. You know, 90, you know, 1999. Unfortunately, majority of you guys, the only thing you guys have exposure to is social media. Social media, social media traders, whatever the case may be. People sit there all day on social media and they try to convince you how smart, how brilliant they are. Like they have the, you know, they have the, 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 the answers to every single question that the universe have. If you ask them, what's the meaning of life? I'm sure they could answer that. But guys, I want to reassure you one thing, okay? We're all human beings. We're all flawed, okay? Whether we're trading for 24 years like myself, or you could be trading 24 months like many of you guys watching this broadcast, but understand we're all flawed. We all come from the same place, and we all go through the same struggles mentally, financially, okay, emotionally. So we are our own domain, and there's nobody smarter than you, okay? There's nobody uh, that's more intelligent than you. They just have more screen time, okay? They just have... Uh, more hours behind the computer that they've seen some of, of the answers that you haven't. So instead of concentrating on the person that's going to enable you and putting you in a situation that you need them, I want you to understand that you are the rock star. It's not them. You are the rock star and you just don't know it yet. Believe in yourself, whatever process you trade, trust that process and good things are going to happen. Guys, God bless. Hope everybody has a phenomenal weekend and I will see you all on Monday. Take